The models that this video pertains to are the 43, 50, 55, and 65 PFL 5604 slash F7 space A or slash F7 space C, as well as the 43, 50, 55, and 65 PFL 5704 backslash F7 space A. Hello and welcome to the sixth video in our series designed to show you how to get the most enjoyment and reliability out of your Philips 2020 Android television. Today's video is going to be a short overview of how to make sure that your television is updating properly. That is to say that the firmware that the television runs on, the, the operating system, which in this case is Android, is kept up to date, as well as how to make sure that all of the individual applications on your television are also up to date. Um, obviously, if you have an older version of an application or an out-of-date version of software, that can cause problems. So we don't want those problems to creep in uh, the longer you own your television. Having said that, there are two very important steps that you need to take up front to ensure that your television is kept up to date. These were detailed in the initial setup video, but it is worth returning to those key recommendations and making sure that you have done them. Number one, the television does need to be connected to the internet. Um, it is a smart television. All of the applications that are on this television require an internet connection. But an often overlooked fact is all of the firmware that's in this television, even the stuff that has nothing to do with streaming over the internet, that also is updated over the internet. So if an update comes out that improves the antenna performance, and you haven't connected the TV to the internet, you're never going to receive that update. The only way that the firmware in this television can be kept up to date is if you give it a connection to the internet. Now, you don't have to leave it connected to the internet all the time if you're not using any of the applications, but it is a good practice to occasionally connect it to your network, check for updates, download those updates, and install them because that's going to keep the TV running smoothly. So, how do you check for updates? Assuming you have an internet connection, you would go under the settings menu, which you see highlighted here. It's the one that looks like a gear in the upper right next to the clock. And you would come down to where it says device preferences. And the very first highlighted line is labeled about. If you click on that, also the first line that pops up that is highlighted is system update. If you click on system update, and you're connected to the internet, this television goes out, it checks the servers and makes sure that it has the latest firmware. Any patches, any performance improvements, security improvements, anything that comes along, this is how you, you tell the TV, hey, check for it, download it, update it. So you see that my TV is in fact up to date, good on me, um, but if there was an update available, then at this point it would offer you the option to install it now. And you would most likely select that and it would download and install. So that is the first part, how to keep the firmware in the TV up to date. The second aspect to this is in your About menu, below where it says System Update, this is where you can actually see the version numbers and the date codes on pretty much all of the main software that this TV runs on. So it's Android version 9, but you can see that the software version is referred to, we always go to the shorthand of the last three digits before the zero. So we would say you're running version 101. And you can see the date that it was pushed out. So um, if you're told by our call center that, hey, an update was just released in February, you would know instantly, oh, I don't have that update. I'm running January 14th. So that's, this is a useful screen for that type of troubleshooting. You can also see the security patch level. So if Android pushes out a new security patch newer than November, this will this number would change after you updated the TV. And then the kernel version as well, and then the build, the overall build code. So these are, these are good, handy bits of information to have um, as you go forward. And, and you know, a year from now, you might hear, oh, well, we're up to version 115, not 101. So connect to the internet at the top and then select system update. That's how you keep your television firmware fully up to date. Now, the second aspect of keeping your television up to date is making sure that all of these individual applications that you have installed are also the latest version. 
Um, if you have been a user of an Android phone or even an iPhone for quite some time, you know how often you turn on your phone and there's a bunch of applications that need to be updated. Um, applications update on a weekly basis in some cases. Um, new features are being added, new menus are being uh, designed, the GUI changes, etc. Um, and those application manufacturers will tell you you need to have the latest version of the application or you might run into issues. So it's very important that you also follow the second recommendation that we made in our initial setup video, and that is that you connect this television to a Google account. Connecting the TV to a Google account not only lets you add applications to the television that were not pre-installed, for example, YouTube TV, Disney Plus, and Crunchyroll are three that are right here on screen that were not initially installed, but because I have a Google account connected to the Google Play Store, I was able to add them. But it is through the Google Play Store that all of these applications are automatically updated and kept current. So without a Google Play Store account connected or without your Google account signed in on this TV and having the TV connected to the Google Play Store, these applications will not update automatically. So that's a problem. Um, potentially over time as new versions of the application are introduced. So please, 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 if you haven't done so already, go ahead and sign into a Google account. It's free. And then to verify that your settings are correct, you're going to want to go into the Google Play Store. And I've shown you a couple of different ways to do that through you know, the applications circle over here. You can click on the apps uh, circle and then click get more apps. That'll open up the Google Play Store. You can also go down here and launch the Google Play Store directly. Um, but I will show you another way to do it. And that is to just go add app to favorites, stick the Play Store on the favorites bar so that it's always visible. And then you can just click the Play Store. Once you're in the Google Play Store and you have obviously connected to the Google account so you can get in the Google Play Store, you're going to want to navigate up to the top and you're going to want to click on my apps for a second. Now, if for whatever reason your settings are wrong, you may see a row here labeled um, applications with updates. And you don't see that here, and I'm going to show you why in a second. But if you do see that, those are all the applications that you need to click on and update. The reason you don't see it here is under settings, I have auto update apps selected. You see there it says auto update apps at any time. Data charges may apply. Um, so if your apps are not updating and they seem to be you know, lagging or, or, or out of whack or you, you call in and you check the version of an application and the application manufacturer says, well, there's a new version. Do you have the latest version? Um, it might be that somehow or another your TV has been set to not auto update apps, or it could also be you're not signed into the Google Play Store. So you're going to want to correct that by signing into the Google Play Store and making sure that auto update is turned on. That will keep all of the applications current and working as efficiently as possible. So we've shown you how to connect to the internet and how to check for firmware updates. We've shown you how to make sure that your applications are auto updating. The last thing that is sometimes helpful is how to see what version of the individual application you're running. You know, you might run into an issue and the application manufacturer XYZ says, oh, well, we've released version 1.3.4. What version are you running? And you're like, I don't know, I'm on a TV. So you navigate down to the apps menu, again, under the settings um, main menu, pick apps, and then go down here where it says select all apps, and then pick whatever app you're interested in. I'm going to pick Crunchyroll. Obviously, we're running version 1.1.0. says so right there. Um, so that is how you can verify what version of the Android TV app you're running. And in some cases, when you go in here, um, you're going to see an indication that that app has already been updated. So if I select the Google Play Store, you'll notice here it says uninstall updates. Well, I personally didn't install the updates, so it obviously automatically updated in the background, but that lets me know that my auto update function is working and I'm now running version 19.1.27 with a bunch of letters and numbers after it. Um, the TV did not come out of the box with that version. So those are the three key things to keep in mind in terms of 
making sure your television has the latest firmware, making sure that your apps automatically update in the background through the Google Play Store, and if you need to do any further troubleshooting, how to get in and see what version of any given app you're running on your Android television. I do hope you found this video helpful, short and sweet though it is. Um, and please continue to enjoy your Android television and let us know in the comments any issues that you find. Thank you.